Hello, fellow members of First United Methodist Church, Oak Ridge. I hope this greeting finds you all as well as possible in this time of isolation and turmoil within our country. Today we will be talking about keeping faith alive in troubling times. Each week things seem to become more difficult in our country, both in terms of the pandemic and political discord. And I personally find it very difficult to keep my faith alive. And I thought perhaps some of you were feeling the same way. So we'll be looking at some readings and discussing what we have been taught through scripture. The first reading is from Numbers 21. Uh, to give you a, a synopsis of where we're at in this reading, the Israelites have left Egypt and are wandering in the wilderness, and they are becoming discontent over the conditions under which they are living. So this is a reading from Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And every one who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This reading is very interesting because to some, the serpent of bronze may seem like an idol. But in reality, the serpent of bronze is a symbol and we have many, many symbols in our faith that we all look to, to remind us of certain elements of our faith. We have the cross, which is a symbol of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us and the sacrifice that many of the believers who went before us made for us as well in order for the, the faith to be able to remain alive. We have communion, which is a symbol of our connection with Jesus Christ and the sacrifice he has made for us and recognition that Jesus is within each one of us to be shared with those we encounter in the world. This serpent of bronze 
is what is a symbol of what we are to look toward in times of trouble when we are extremely frustrated and downhearted and in need of assurance of the presence of God. It's interesting that the the serpent on a pole is actually a Greek symbol. There are two different types, and both of them have been used for symbols of medicine and healing. Um, They come from ancient Greece, as I said, and one is Asclepios, who apparently came from before the Trojan War. And he is mentioned as a, a healer, a skilled healer, who was able to treat people who were injured in battle. His, um, his symbol is used uh, in the World Health Organization. It's also used within the um, American Medical Association. It is a single serpent around a rough uh, staff. The other symbol is that of Calusius, which is two serpents around a more um, uh, structured staff, and they, they swirl around the staff and come to the top. This is a symbol that was used by printers. And in the 19th century, John Churchill of London was a medical publisher and he used Caduceus as a printer's mark. So it became associated with the, with healing, with documents of medicine and healing and has since been used with the Army Medical Corps, and you also see it associated with uh, the American Medical Association and and other uh, medical uh, associations, practices, etc. So it's interesting to look at those symbols and and then look at the symbol that Moses has been given to show to the people as an example of God being with them when they are in a period of distress. They're being attacked by poisonous serpents. They are dying. And all they have to do is look at this serpent as a representative of God, as a symbol of God, and they will be healed. So what does that mean for us? Well, today there's a lot of uh, need for healing, both healing within the spirit, healing within the body, and to be reminded that God is with us always and that we can look for God's presence in our life and be reminded that that he is with us, that he will guide us, and that we can get through this together as a group of believers, I believe is very important. Now we're going to be listening now to a the hymn Look and Live sung by the Nairobi South Youth Group and it 
it goes hand in hand with this reading that we are to look to the Lord and live. reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Now concerning food sacrifice to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge. But anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, 
as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol. And their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So, by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed, But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now in Corinth, there are all different types of believers, people who have been worshiping idols uh, for centuries. And then there are the Christians who are a new set of believers who don't believe in idols and are struggling, trying to decide whether or not they should be eating certain types of food. The point Paul is making with them right now is that there is no reason for believers to do anything that will weaken a believer who is just beginning to come along. Jesus Christ is the way, and he has taught us how to live. But it's a difficult way to live. And for us to profess to know everything and be superior in any way is very much like making ourselves into an idol and professing that other human beings believe and know everything threatens the other person into believing that he or she is an idol. So we as Christians are challenged in very challenging times to focus on what it is that we believe, to act accordingly, 
and to be the finest examples of what Jesus Christ taught as the way to the kingdom of God. So may none of us give in to the things that we are so tempted to idolize, of which there are many in our society today. We are going to listen now to In Christ There Is No East or West, performed by Samama Shill's Worship. And it is a reminder to all of us that in Christ we are all one and none of us is better than any other one in the eyes of God, in the eyes of Jesus Christ, in the eyes of the Holy Spirit. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 13 through 21. No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So as Moses lifted up the serpent, Jesus has been lifted up 
for us to look upon as our way to eternal life. And we are called to live in the light, to be true to what Jesus has taught us to be, and to express our beliefs in the ways in which we serve others and are devoted to the goodness in the world for all those in the world as children of God. And may we all continue to behave accordingly. Now we will be listening to the hymn, There is a Balm in Gilead, which is an African-American spiritual. It's interesting that the slaves chose Jeremiah as one of the readings or one of the books of the Bible that they were able to identify with the most. It is also interesting that they have taken the the reading where Jeremiah is asking is there a is there no balm in Gilead? It comes from Jeremiah 8 verse 22. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? And it is a question. And what the slaves did was they turned it around and made it a statement. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. This is being sung unaccompanied by the Adventist vocal ensemble. This hymn has been playing in my mind all week, um, and I am finding comfort in it. So I hope that this brings you some comfort.
Now let us pray. Dear Lord, in these days filled with a sense of isolation, discord, and uncertainty, we ask that you be with us and guide us. We ask to be reminded daily of your presence in our lives and our ability to look to you for assurance of grace and blessing. Allow us to recognize the idols in our lives such that we are able to see them for what they are and then look to your teachings as the true message of the way to the kingdom of God and holiness. Unite us as believers. Make it possible for us to stand together with you as followers of your son, Jesus Christ, and representatives of the Holy Spirit in our troubled world. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. May God be with you throughout the coming week, and may we all continue to be strong representatives of the love of God in the world.